Dude, finding things is so hard, especially if your desk looks like mine, okay? My desk looks like a tornado went through it, destroyed everything, and then a hurricane went through it after the tornado did. Like, actually, it's nasty. If only there was a way, hmm, some way for us to organize our desk so that we could find everything easily. Well, unfortunately, I do not have the capability of learning how to organize an actual desk, but in CS, there's a way to organize things so it makes it a lot nicer and allows you to do so much with your algorithms. Hello everybody, I'm Karar, and today we're going to be talking about how to do the online sorting, not the actual physical sorting because I'm bad at that, but we're going to be doing some epic computer science sorting. We're going to be talking about sorting, what it does, and how you can use sorting to do a lot of cool algorithms. So for the most part, you don't really need to know how sorting works exactly, but you just need to know that after an array is sorted, what happens to it. So basically, let's say that we have an array, right? We have like our 3, 1, 5, 6, 2, 4, Seven, I don't know, something like that, right? So basically, sorting does to this array what you would kind of expect to do, right? Like if you sort something, you organize it. Like how else would you organize an array? It basically puts it in order from least to greatest, or greatest to least, however you want to organize it. Basically, sorting just puts it in a very nice format to make the array a lot nicer in general. So, in this case, we would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Epic. Now, I know this doesn't seem very impressive, right? Like anyone could just put an array and sort it under hooray. No one cares. Well, yes, you should care, okay? It's actually super, 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 super useful. But before we get into why it's useful, let's first look at how you code stuff. I keep saying that you don't know how to know how to work, and I'm serious, because all of the languages that you probably use in Musico, they all have it implemented for you. Like, if you code it up during the actual competition, that is wasting your time. So you should use the previous algorithms that are already coded into the language. So let's start with C++ and see how to do sorting in that. Alrighty, so let's say that we have an array. Let's put our array from their previous like example. All right, so we have an array, right? Now we want to actually sort this array, and the way we do that is we first include algorithm. All right, so now we have algorithm included. Now we want to sort the array. So basically, it's pretty easy in C++. All you got to do is you go here, you do sort r, comma, r, plus the size of r, which is seven in this case, and that's it. Now, if we print out our r, it's going to be sorted. So let's print it out before and after so we can see the difference. All right, now we run our code. So see, look. Basically what the sort did is it took what we had in the beginning, it put it all in order, and then it printed it out. Alright, so that's pretty cool. One thing we wanted to do with a vector in C++, then, it's basically the same thing except, let me show you. So basically for vectors, it's exactly the same as for arrays, except, if you look at the sort line over here, you basically have array.begin and array.end over here. Pretty cool. So that's C++, right? Now, 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 not all of you guys do C++, so let's see how to do it in Java. So we wanted to sort this epic array. All we gotta do in Java is write arrays.sort a. And then we just do the same printout at the end, and we'll see how it changed. Pretty epic. And then one more thing for Java, if you want to sort an array list, then it's slightly different. So if you're doing this, instead of using arrays.sort, you use collections.sort. Very cool. That's Java and C++ down, and I know that a couple of you guys do Python, so... I personally don't know how to do a Python off the top of my head, so we're gonna figure it out together. Dude, it's probably something troll. Dude, Python's always troll. So let's see, it's probably, you just put sort and then the name of the array. Calling it right now. Dude, Python's pretty predictable, not gonna lie. All right, sort in Python. Oh, hey, hey, oh, am I right, am I right? Aw, oh, no, it's numbers.sort. God dang it. But anyways, yeah, so this is basically how you do it. You basically have your list over here, you got your list of numbers, then, if you want to sort that list of numbers, you just do numbers.sort, and you get a sorted array. Very cool. Alright, so now that we know how to do the code, you're like, great. Okay, we know how to make it sorted. It looks cool. Yeah, yeah, I love sorted arrays, but what the point? What's the point? Like, I don't care if you can put numbers in order. There's no point in putting numbers in order. What's the point? Well, young grasshopper, there is a point, okay? There's actually a lot of points. Because sorting, you can do a lot of stuff. Maybe this is not the best example, so let's change up the example, and I'll show you. So let's say that it's like... 5, 2, 3, 3, 4, 1, 7. Okay, now if we sort this, we get something pretty epic. We get 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 5, 7. Now it's cool. The first thing that you probably notice in this array is that both the 3s get put next to each other. And like, basically all the ones that are the same get put next to each other, and this is super useful. So. Like, immediately you can see, like, if you wanted to count which the mode of the array is, you can immediately do it if you sort it, right? You basically go through it, and you're like, oh, there's only one one because it changes to a two the next time. There's only one two because it changes to a three. 
but there's two threes because there's a three and then another three and then we know that these are all the threes in the whole array because we sorted it. It's pretty cool. The main thing you should always keep in mind once you sort an array is that everything to the left of a number is going to be smaller than it and everything to the right is going to be bigger than it. So if we wanted to see how many numbers are smaller than seven in this array, we basically look, oh, wow, seven is the, what, seventh number in this array, right? So that means that there must be six other numbers that are smaller than it. Let us say that we have four. How many numbers are smaller than four in an array? We see that, oh, four is the fifth number in an array. So that means there's four other numbers that are smaller than it. Like in, in, in the first array, we would have to go through every single number in the array to see how many numbers are uh, less than four. In the sorted array, we just look at what position four is in. Like, it's crazy. And you thought that was all, huh? You thought that I was gonna be done telling you all the pros of sorting an array? Well, you're wrong, okay? There's even more. You're like, hey, Karar, what happens if I wanted to find a number in an array? And let's say you want to say, is 4 in my array? And then you, being a troll, you would go through this array one by one. You'd be like, this is not a 4, so no, we don't have a 4 yet. Let's go through the next one. Oh, that's a 2, that's not a 4. So we go to the next one. No, that's not a 4. Unfortunate. 3, still not a 4. And finally, finally we got to the 4. Epic. But that takes too long. So in Usico, that's just not going to cut it. But if you sort it, things are going to cut real well. So look at a sorted array, right? Basically, we can look at the middle point of our array, which is this 3. And we're like, 3 is smaller than 4. So that means if there was a 4 in an array, 4 must be on the right side of this 3. So then we go to the right side and we go to the middle of the right side and we're like, wow, it's a 5 and 5 is greater than 4. So that means if a 4 was in our array, the 4 must be left of the 5. But we also know that it's right of the 3 and there's only one number right, and right of the 3 and left of the 5. So we go to the thing that's remaining, the 4, and we're like, dang, we have a 4. And we only checked three numbers. We didn't have to go through the whole array, look through all of these five numbers just to get our four. We only looked at three. So the reason I'm giving you this example is not only because this algorithm itself is like a super useful algorithm in general, it's just like a proof that sorting an array could open up a lot of opportunities for doing better algorithms. The algorithm I just talked about is called binary search and it's applicable in all levels, like not even just in bronze or silver or gold. Platinum problems are often just applying binary search in a really smart way. Other examples of where a sorted array might be useful, let's say you wanted to find like how many numbers are within one of three. So that means like uh, two or greater or four or less. Then we basically look in our array to find the lowest point where a two could be put in. So we go through our array and we're like, hey, this is the lower bound, this is where two would be put in. And then we say, hey, a four could be put in all the way up till here. So anything between that, is basically between two and four. And we're able to do that really fast because in a sorted array, we could do binary search. And we saw that that's way faster than just going through the array one by one by one by one. So basically whenever you're doing a use ago problem, always think about sorting the array first because generally like sorting doesn't take too long for any one use ago problem. And even if sorting is not the answer, just try it out because you might notice something cool about the data. It's all around just a good idea to sort the input they give you, see whether you can notice any patterns and that'll just help you solve a lot of problems. But you're probably wondering like, I don't want to code up this nasty binary search thing. Well, today's your lucky day because in C++, I'm not sure about the other language, but in C++, you could do that without coding a single line of code. Okay, fine, maybe one line of code, but it's a lot easier than it might be in other languages. Alrighty, so basically C++ has two algorithms for doing binary search. The first method is called lower bound. Now I've talked about this a lot in like my Usico walkthroughs, but this method is super important and I wanted to explain it properly today. So basically what lower bound does is it finds the lowest point in our sorted array that we could put something in for the array to remain sorted. So if I said like lower bound two, then can we put our two over here? No, we can't because then it'd be two one and one is less than two and that's not sorted, so that's bad. And then it would look like here. Could two be put there? Yes, because one, two, two, three is sorted, right? If we try like lower bound four, let's say. It would go here, no, because four one two is not sorted. Here, no, because four one four two is not sorted. Here, no, because two four three is not sorted. Here, no, because three four three is not sorted. And finally, it would put it here. And it would return the index over here. So this index would be zero, one, two, three, four. So basically lower bound four would equal four because you could put the four in the fourth index and still have the whole array sorted. Upper bound on the other hand does something slightly different. It basically says the highest place in your array where you could put the four without messing up the array sort. So it would basically start from the top and it's like, no, if you put a four here, four is less than seven, so that wouldn't be sorted. You can't put it after the five, but you could put it over here. So it would return five because you could put the four in the fifth index and still have the overall array sorted. 
pretty cool. So let me just show you like how the code looks real quick. So basically what we can do is we can see out the lower bound that we want to find. And what you do is you do r.begin, r.m, and then you put the thing that you want to find. So in our case, we wanted to find four, but the thing about C++ is lower bound returns an iterator, not an actual number. So if you want to just get the number, like you don't need to know what an iterator is, it's pretty useless, but all you have to do is subtract something called array.begin and you should be good. And if this all goes according to plan, which is better, it should give us four like we decided in our example. Very epic. Okay, that's basically it. That's all I wanted to say about sorting. It's a pretty useful thing. I found like a pretty good problem example of this, but I think that would take a bit of too much time in this particular video, but I will do that next as my musical walkthrough for my next time. Alrighty, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys want more of these crash scores, let me know. A lot of you guys have asked for them, which is why I'm making it. So yeah, thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time.